Ever wondered what Flygon would be like if it were real? Have you wondered why it evolves from some tiny wannabe bug type? Well, you have come to the right channel. What's up, everyone? Welcome to my channel, Geek Ecology, where we talk about your favorite fandom's organisms as if they were real. For this video, we are diving back into the Pokemon universe to talk about the ecology of Trapinch, Vibrava, and Flygon. So let's get started. Starting off with Trapinch, its line might be ground type and later a dragon type, but it's actually closer related to the bug type Pokemon. Trapinch is a small invertebrate Pokemon, meaning that it doesn't have a backbone, and it's based off of modern day ant lions, which are a group of about 2,000 different insects in the family Myrmeliontidae. Myr meaning ant and leon meaning lion, so it's literally the family of ant lions. And this is due to the predatory habits of their larvae. Their larvae create these pitfall traps out of sand in order to catch ants and other passing by insects. Once they become adults, they resemble something closer to a dragonfly, which would explain the change from Trapinch to Vibrava and Flygon. So like real life ant lions, Trapinch will build these pitfalls out of sand or other loose soils. They then wait in the bottom and wait for prey to walk by and fall into the trap where they can grab them with their giant jaws. You can also tell that Trapinch have extremely small eyes since they don't really have to rely on sight for anything. They just kind of build their pitfall trap, wait in the bottom, and wait for stuff to fall into their mouth. Because of the way they hunt, they must live in regions with sandy soils. In the Pokemon games, this is mostly represented by them living in high desert regions. Other Pokemon that probably fall prey to Trapinch include invertebrates and small lizards, but also Pokemon like Sandshrew, Cacnea, Axu, Helioptile, and Scorupi. Basically anything that is small enough to fall into its trap and get chomped. Trapinch's main and possibly only predator is Sandile. This is because Sandile has the ability to burrow under the sand and come up from behind Trapinch to prey upon it. Trapinch really doesn't have a whole lot of defenses other than having one really big mouth, and that's only on one end of its body. Trapinch is a larval form of Pokemon, like those found in most bug types, and it undergoes a massive change when it evolves to become an adult. Trapinch wants to store as much energy as possible so that it can undergo such a big evolution into Vibrava. Vibrava is the intermediary stage, which replaces the pupa stage of a lot of insects. Since it must undergo such a large size and body type change, an intermediate stage was evolved to get it from Trapinch all the way up to Flygon. This allows it another period of time to store up that energy to make such a big evolution to get to its final stage. Flygon has evolved wings, but they aren't quite fully developed. This only allows it to fly for short distances. Think of the short spurts of flight like a grasshopper might do. Its wings aren't just used to try and fly around, they're also used for hunting. Their wings are able to generate ultrasonic waves in order to paralyze their prey. Vibrava preys on small insects and reptiles, but also some Pokemon like Cacnea or should it be near water, Poliwag. These Pokemon pose low threats and are easily incapacitated by Vibrava, allowing for an easy dinner. Vibrava feeds similar to modern day assassin bugs, which are members of the family Reduvidae, and both assassin bugs and Vibrava feed through extra oral digestion. Assassin bugs use a long proboscis, which is kind of like an extended mouth, to stab their prey items and then liquefy their insides with their specialized saliva. The Brava does something similar, but it lacks a proboscis. It simply spits up its saliva on its incapacitated prey to help dissolve it from the outside. This makes it much easier for consumption, given that the Brava doesn't really have too big of mouth parts, and it's feeding on organisms that are quite large. In order to find these prey items, Vibrava has evolved complex eyes. If you remember looking at Trapinch, its eyes are quite underdeveloped. But it didn't really need vision. Now that Vibrava is actively hunting and is above ground, it needs much better eyesight to find its victims. So it has evolved these eyes similar to a praying mantis. And these kinds of eyes allow for stereopsis, which is the ability to perceive in three dimensions. This allows for good depth perception, which is important when hunting and also flying. Once Vibrava has stored enough energy, it's able to evolve into Flygon and reaches adulthood. Flygon is now a fully evolved Pokemon and has become an apex predator. Flygon are primarily solitary Pokemon that really only meet up with other Flygon once a year for mating. Eggs are laid in the sand for easier thermoregulation, 
since under the sand stays a much more constant temperature than the top side of the sand which would fluctuate wildly between the cold nights and the hot days. Newborn trap inch would then emerge from the eggs and spread out through the sands until they find a spot that they would like to set up their pitfall. Since so much energy is required to make it through all stages of evolution and to attain such a large body size, Flygon are most likely a long-lived Pokémon. With its increase in size, it has to drastically increase the size of organisms that it's preying upon in order to fuel its body. But larger organisms are also harder to defeat. To help with this process, it creates large sandstorms to disorient larger prey. To help them navigate these sandstorms, they have evolved an exterior island, which is this red-looking lens that you see here. Many modern-day animals have an extra eyelid to help protect their eye from either water or sand. And this is present in animals like crocodiles and alligators so they can see underwater, but also in camels to help protect from blowing sands. But Flygon isn't the only Pokémon living in the desert that is going to benefit from a sandstorm. The sandstorms created by Flygon are also used by Crocodile to hunt the same prey. Crocodile will scare up any Pokémon that have tried to hunker down to wait out the sandstorm. Once those Pokémon or other organisms have left their defensive positions, Flygon can then come in and take them out. Because the Pokémon or animals caught in the sandstorm can't evade a sandstorm, a large land predator, and a large flying predator. And this whole thing is a form of symbiosis called mutualism, in which both parties benefit from working together. Flygon will most likely be preying on Pokémon such as Cacturn, young Hippowdons and Rhyhorn, and also occasionally a Sandslash. And there is the general ecology of Trapinch, Vibrava, and Flygon. Thanks for watching, and leave a like and subscribe to help my channel, and feel free to check out my other videos. You can also catch my shorter format content on TikTok, and I'll leave a link down below. Happy researching, and we'll see you next time.